Hey guys, this is Jacques from Makulu Linux and we have just launched our Makulu Linux Core 2020 and uh, therefore I just want to do a quick short video uh, for the guys that download, you know, you can maybe watch this video, get a sort of inside scoop on what is core, what's under the hood, you know, what makes a tick and what to be aware of. So um, core is a uh, dual dock try menu desktop OS okay when I say dual dock I mean there's a dock at the bottom here and there's a dock on this side as you can see there are two docks so if I open up a window pop up little terminal window here you'll see there's a dock at the bottom and a dock on the side if I go full screen you'll see both docks disappear and if I move my mouse uh, if I move the window with the mouse, if I drag the window to the bottom, the bottom dock disappears. And if I drag it into the uh, uh, right-hand side, the side dock disappears. So both docks work independently. They each are separate from, they are not linked, okay? So if the space is needed by something, the dock will give way to the item that needs a space. So they are set to IntelliHide, which is really awesome. Okay, so the bottom dock houses your favorite icons. The side dock houses system icons. These are like shutdown and volume control and your power uh, update manager, network manager, uh, wallpaper changer, and uh, the other patcher. Okay, so these are system information icons. So they'll give you system information. Uh, right, so those are the two docks. Uh, this dock you can obviously uh, alter. Since these are favorite icons, you can drag icons on you and you can drag icons off. For example, let's say I want to get rid of an icon on the dock. I simply just drag it and off the dock and just release it and it's gone. As you can see, it's no longer there. Okay, so to put things onto the dock, you can just drag things and drop them on the dock. Okay, it's already there, so it won't place it again. But you can put, for example, help and support you can put on the dock. There we go. Uh, so just drag it on and to remove it. I just drag it off again It's that easy to put items on the dock and to pull them off the dock. So very very awesome now you have three menus you have the uh, uh, Well, what I call a try menu You have three menus you have your full screen menu your traditional menu and you have the ring menu The one everybody's going to be speaking about is the ring menu you can uh, you have two ways to access it one, you can access it through your dock here. Yeah, you can just click on menu and it brings up the ring menu. Now, it might look like a little bit of a strange menu, but it's really easy to navigate. If you look here, it says there multimedia, internet, graphics, games, accessories, settings, system, and office. So you just click on any of these. You just move them, drag the mouse over to, say, for example, multimedia, and it will open another little sub menu. And here you'll have XF Burn, Pulse Audio, MPV Player, Kazam, Audio Recorder, and Rhythm Box. And back to main menu so you if you want to open something like XF burn you can just click on it that's it done and it opens okay um, and so if you instead want to go back to the main menu you can either just click here to go back to the main or click main menu there that's it back to the main and then exit so it's a very easy menu to navigate it might feel a little strange at first like anything new but you know, after using it for a few days, and once you get used to where something is, it's it's it becomes like second nature. You know, you just click and you go there. Uh, sorry, you just click and you go there, and you click there. Except burn, because I've already opened it. I, I just know up, 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 done. So it's 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 a very easy menu to use. Okay, very very easy. Uh, the second way of accessing that menu, well, the first way is through the bottom dock. The second way would be through the main menu here. 
So if you click main menu here, it will give you, there we go, there's the ring menu. Now, uh, right clicking here and choosing main menu will give you access to all three menus. So you can access any of the three menus through here. But we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, so you can just activate that ring menu there. Which means that no matter where you are, you can just access quickly your ring menu if that's the menu you want to use. To use the full screen menu, you just drag your mouse into the top corner. That's it. You've got the full screen menu. To use the traditional menu, you just drag your mouse into the bottom left corner. Traditional menu is the one to use if you want to drag items onto your dock from the menu. Then this is the easiest menu to do so. You just open up anywhere on the traditional menu, whatever you want to drag, and you just drag it onto the dock. Okay, and if you want to get rid of it, drag it off the dock. Very easy. So bottom left corner, move your mouse there for the traditional menu, top left hand corner for the main menu. Of course, you can just right click on the desktop or in any folder, you can just right click anywhere, you can choose main menu and you can open up any of the three menus straight from here. Full screen menu or ring menu. Okay. So no matter where you are, you can just right click and access your menus. You don't actually physically need to drag your mouse anywhere unless you wish to. So that's really nice. I mean, it might seem like a bit of an overkill, but no matter where you are, what you're doing, you have quick access to a menu. You know, people are creatures of habit. So quickly somebody will, this will be their preferred method of opening the menu, or that will be their preferred menu of opening a method of opening the menu. Some people might run multiple monitors and they can't always access the side, uh, you know, dragging the mouse to the side or maybe they're inside a virtual machine which is not full screen and therefore they don't want to drag the mouse off the screen. They can just right click and choose menu and then select whichever menu. So there are reasons that we have done it this way. It will be an advantage to some people. Maybe not everybody, but some people will be glad that they have that option, this right click option here. Okay, um, so by default, if you look at the, the system, it's really easy. You've got two docks and you've got three menus. If, if you know that, then you probably know your way around about 40% of the system already, okay? Uh, the other parts I'd like to cover is uh, the wallpaper. To change the wallpaper, you can go into the wallpaper change it at the bottom here, which is what most people do, but a much easier way is simply just to right click and choose desktop background. Here you've got all the options that you need at your fingertips. For starters, you can just go random back or random forward, so you can just randomly select any wallpaper by just going next wallpaper, back to go to the previous wallpaper, or you can just keep clicking forward until you find a wallpaper you like and then just close. That's it. So you just want some random wallpaper because there are many wallpapers in here. So you want a random wallpaper, just click forward until you like, find one you like and then close. Or you can actually select the wallpaper. You click wallpaper selector. Now you can just go through the different wallpapers and there are many, many, and they're all pretty. They're all pretty. And then find one that you like and then just right click closed. Once you've selected it, right click closed. So easy. Wallpaper select. Choose a wallpaper. Then right click close. That's it. Now, if you want to change the settings, how often the wallpaper changes, if it changes at all, if you want to download additional wallpapers, and if you want to add effects and so forth, you can just right click, choose desktop background, and you can choose configure wallpaper options. That's it. Now you can set it how often to change. For this demo purposes, maybe let's make it every one minute. Therefore, you get to see some of the random wallpapers. Uh, you can choose it to fetch more online if you want. You can download, set it to download. You can add effects. You can add various colors and sizes. And there's lots of options here, which is really nice. And of course, if you never wanted to change, you want to change it manually, you can just untick these two boxes over here and it will stay on a wallpaper until you change the wallpaper, which is really nice as well. Sometimes I like that option. So very easy, right click change desktop background and you just choose whichever option you like and you know I'm going to be porting this little this new little GUI that I've designed here for oops sorry 
this new new little GUI I've designed here for the wallpaper background I'm gonna backport this to flash and Lindo so you'll see this soon in flash and Lindo it's very nice little GUI for managing wallpapers uh, the similar thing with the clock this conky clock people keep asking how do I disable the clock how do I change this how do I change that uh, let's go change the desktop background to something that's maybe a little bit sort of uh, let's find a wallpaper that's a little bit lighter in color not sure we have that many that are like color okay let's choose this one right so you've got a background and you don't want the white clock you want another color on here for example you'd rather have a black clock because it's a light background and the black would look better you can just simply right click test the clock and now you have options you can set 12 or 24 hour format you can set black or white color or you can disable the clock completely so if you want to set a black clock, you just click select black clock. It changes like a, it takes like a second to change, and that's it done. Now it's black. So you can always put a clock on that matches your wallpaper. Okay. Sometimes you'll have dark wallpaper, you'll need a whiter color clock, and sometimes you have a light wallpaper, you'll need a darker color clock. So you can just right click desktop clock and change the clock accordingly. Some people prefer 12 hours, some people prefer 24, uh, it's now AM, so it doesn't matter whether I change 12 or 24, it's still going to show 4.30. Later in the day, if, if I set to 24, it will actually show the, the, the... But yeah, you can change 12 or 24 hours. For example, look at that wallpaper changed on its own. Remember, I set it to one minute, and now it's on a, on a dark background. You can't really see the clock, so you just go right-click, select white clock, look at that. Took like a second. Done so very nice that you can do that okay uh, some other things on the right click menu is uh, obviously you can uh, open your system settings directly from the right click menu we'll get into system settings in a bit and of course your themes you can just right click on the desktop and choose themes so this right click menu has lots of options just right click there look right click themes done now on themes you can select, I don't like that wallpaper, it's not one of my favorites. I'll put it in there because I know some people will like sort of planets and stuff. Let's go choose something else. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, we'll leave it there. Right, so on themes, if you open up themes, and by the way, if you are inside a virtual machine, a virtual box specifically, sometimes when you uh, uh, open up virtual box but you don't open it full screen and then you resize it to full screen with a control F or whatever, you notice this little, this uh, dock bar sometimes goes to the middle of the screen. I don't know, that it only happens with virtual box. Uh, but a quick fix is just to open up themes. When this themes, it forces the bar down to the bottom again I'm sure people that run VirtualBox will notice that but uh, since I do make a lot of videos in VirtualBox and I do work in VirtualBox a lot I've just noticed that on VMware it doesn't matter VMware is always awesome okay so if you open up themes you'll see here the, that you've got quite a few options here for example you can change the mouse cursors on the fly you can just click a cursor and it's, it's instant changes instant and it will save through reboots. When you reboot PC, you'll still have the same cursor, which is really awesome. Um, borders, you can also click to change borders instantly. They'll change on the fly as well. Some of them you won't really visibly see. For example, these two, you won't see a massive difference because this box is quite small. But if you open up something like a terminal, which is a bigger window, and then you click, you'll see there, see there, you see the border change over there. It's a, uh, it's those ones are much wider. The other one is not as wide, so you'll notice differences like that only with some bigger windows. So just be aware of the borders. They are different. In fact, there it actually shows you this one's much wider. That one's not. Okay. Um, theme colors is nice because if you choose a theme color, let's go for example red. It won't only change the window borders, uh, window border theming, but it will also change the icons as well as the menu highlights like selecting something and so forth you know just like there's a lot of red everywhere it's not just window border colors you, if you go for purple for example the icons will change to a purple and uh, so will the window borders and so will the highlights everything changes to purple and you've got 23 different color variations here this is really awesome unlike flash like uh, we'll have one green icon set that will be shared with most green icons one red that will be shared with these three color variations and one blue um, unlike flash which it does that uh, core 
actually has an icon set for every color. So, for example, you notice there's pink, there's red. Watch the icons change. There's sorry, there's pink. There's like a rose color. There's a red color. There's an orange color. There's a yellow color. And there's a I think this is like a what color is this again? Like a breezy color or something. There's a olive color. So each each color has its own icon set. So that's not nice. so there's a lot more icon sets in here than than in flash, which is really cool. You also have the uh, the black dark sorry dark uh, themes, three dark themes with a white variation, a red one and a blue one, which is really nice. So lots of options, lots of colors, lots of effects, which is really nice. You also have 3D, so that's nice. Let's go check out the 3D for a second. So if we enable 3D, you're going to notice here, just give it a second to change. You're going to notice that with 3D on, you've got the lot of uh, sort of, let me choose a lighter wallpaper, something where the 3D really shines nicely. Um, with 3D on, it's actually a really nice wallpaper, but I want lighter than that. Let's go for this. Okay, here we go. So with 3D on, you'll notice you've got this very nice, beautiful theme. You'll notice you've got the whole transparent border, which really sits nicely when you open something full screen. You've got these beautiful black buttons that match the sort of uh, uh, semi-transparent border. And you've got all the effects. You've got the wobbly effects. You've got your cube. Uh, if you can, you can open the cube by pushing the uh, control alt and down, and then you can sort of flick through it sideways, or you can control alt and drag. You've got the cylinder view. There's the whole 3D cube, which is really awesome. You can also uh, open up different items on different windows, and then you can just flip through them. I mean, different workspaces. So on this workspace, you've got terminal. On this workspace, you've got uh, your file manager. And as you can see there, if on if something's on the current workspace and it is not max minimized, you can actually get a preview window of it, as you can see. And if you want to flip to something that's open on another workspace, you simply click on it and it will flip with a sort of a really cool effect, which is really nice. So you've got some really cool, cool effects uh, that comes with the 3D. Something else to note as well is that the 3D is actually incorporated into the OS itself, it's not just something that enables and disables. If you look here, for example, now with the 3D open, you've got the 3D borders and the 3D settings in your settings manager. There's your settings manager. So there's 3D borders and there's 3D settings, right? Uh, if we disable 3D, we go back to themes, turn off, disable 3D. So we go back to the normal now. We open up settings manager, 3D is gone. See, the icons are gone. Instead, now you've got your normal window manager tweaks and you've got your work, normal workspaces, okay? We turn 3D on again, let's go to 3D, let's turn it on, enable 3D, and now we go to settings manager, there's 3D border, ugh, there's 3D borders, 3D settings, but you see the themes, ugh, the window manager tweaks and the workspaces is gone, okay? You can also access 3D through your actual settings manager which is nice too and enable it or disable it there okay so that's pretty cool too so 3d working out of the box now do remember that you need decent hardware to run the 3d smoothly and also it's not something that's guaranteed to work on every single person's pc very well some people have great success using compass and emerald some don't so if you don't i'm sorry but you're probably just one of those guys that just you know, it just doesn't work on your system, and uh, there's not much we can do about that. Right. Uh, looking at the rest of the OS, you're going to see that there is, a, it's very beautiful out the box. Very beautiful. There's lots of transparency. You've got these beautiful themes. Just the theming is just so pleasant on all levels. If you open up your file manager, you're going to see that especially. The, the blacks are black. The whites are white. The colors pop. It's a beautiful setup look at this just look at this it's so beautiful everything is just very sexy out of the box so theming is top notch 
So theming in, in Maclu Linux core is top notch. You've got very beautiful themes out of the box and they're very easy to change. Just right click on the desktop, themes, and choose a color variation. Maybe we should go for something a bit more green now. Change to something else. A little bit more green. I like green. Green's awesome. Right, uh, to change your desktop, uh, to disable the clock, easy, just enable or disable, choose disable. Your system will actually re-log if you do that, so it will kind of, almost like log you out and log you back in. It takes like a, just a few seconds and we're done and now the clock is actually gone. Just, oh, sorry, clock, disable, just click there to disable. You want to enable again, just click again and choose enable. It does take about 10 to 20 seconds because it actually re-logs the system. As you can see, I'm inside a VMware client here. And of course, once you log back in, there's a timer of about 40 seconds before the clock starts up. This is normal, so once you're back in, after enabling it, just give it a few seconds, it will pop up on its own. Right, so that's the clock, that's the theming. Really nice theming. The, the 3D, the mouse cursors that you can change on the fly. Um, other things I want to cover now is the actual menus. I want to just quickly go through what's in the menus. So if we move our mouse cursor to the bottom corner there, you'll see that the menu pops up. And if we go through here, you'll see that there's a lot of, uh, well, most of the software is pretty much what we had in, uh, in Windows and Flash. So you'll get a little, mostly the same uh, you've got the USB creator, you've got XF burn, you've got your screenshot, traditional menus there, you've got uh, uh, Orca reader, USB creator, you've got your onboard screen screen keyboard, you've got life uh, leaf pad, and you've got a calendar and calculator and so forth. And the games you've got uh, chess, solitaire, and Sudoku, which is the side games. You've got Steam and Lutris on here, and you've got Play on Linux. And the graphics you've got my paint, no Mac, and Pinter, this is an image viewer, the other two are paint and image editing apps. On the internet, you've got Google Chrome, Megasync, OpenDrive, pCloud, Ramina, Skype, and Discord, which is very nice. And the multimedia, you've got Audio Recorder, Kazam, MPV, XF Burn, and Rhythmbox. And the Office Suite, you've got the LibreOffice Suite, as well as Document Viewer and the Calendar. Under system utilities, you've got boot repair, bleach bit, uh, you've got a driver manager, grub customizer, mostly a lot of uh, a synap synaptic package manager, you've got a software center, software sources, you've got time shift, which is a snapshot manager, you've got Uku as well, you've got user and groups, uh, so screen share, and we'll get into that in, uh, in a bit. And uh, yeah, disk uses analyzer, it's mostly a lot of default stuff you'll find in most distros. You also got a little help and support button over here, and if you click that, it will pop up the help and support, which is the same as what the one on the desktop does. So uh, the menus are very easy to use. The software is most of the software that most people will run. It's the default software that probably 90% of people will install. And uh, I, I've been hearing a lot of people on the reviews when they review lenders and, and flashes. Wow, all this bloat, so many soft, so much software. And I think to yourself, but how is it blocked? I mean, you're going to have one of everything. You've got one calculator, one calendar. You've got one notepad. You've got one disk manager. You've got, okay, there are a couple of variations for games, but you don't have a lot of games on Steam, so you need to, you know, variation is, you need this. You need this on, on, on Linux if you're going to be playing games. If you are a gamer on Linux, you will probably have Lutris and you will have Steam. And you probably will have play on Linux as well. So these three are a given. The other three are just a little side. This is probably a, the only section where I could say maybe there's a little bit of bloat, but it's not really. I mean, any gamer in Linux is probably going to install pretty much all of this and more. And the graphics, you got uh, an image viewer, one image viewer, one paint program, one image uh, editor. And the internet, you got one browser. Uh, you do have uh, three um, online storage apps, but however, I mean, uh, online storage is not something that, 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 you know, is considered bloat, I don't think. I mean, if you think about it, Megasync gives you 50 gigabytes free. Who doesn't want 50 gigabytes of free online storage and a client to go with it? Um, you know, uh, Google Drive, everybody uses Google now. 
Google Drive gives you 15 gigs for free. So that's uh, 65 gigs of free storage right there. PCloud gives you about another 10 to 15 gigs. So you've got about 70, 75 gigs of free online storage here. I mean, I don't understand how that could be seen as bloat. You need a, a remote desktop client. I mean, that's a, needed on just about almost any Linux out there. So that's one of those. There's a Skype, one messenger, and Discord, which is, I guess, also a, a messenger, but it's more for gaming and uh, some other stuff. So it's not really for business the way that Skype is. So you've got one of each. You've got one audio recorder, one screen recorder, uh, one movie player, one CD burner, one one audio recorder you've got one office suite you know so there's like one of everything for most items so i don't understand where the term bloat comes from and if i don't add these and i just put out the distro with nothing on it and you go and install uh, all of these items because you're going to install web browser you're going to install online storage you're going to install discord and skype and doesn't it then become bloat anyway so i, I really don't understand the use of the term bloat uh, I think it's really lazy for developers not to include apps because by including apps, we've tested everything, we've made sure that it's all compatible with our distro and that it's all running at optimal speed where uh, the distros that release with no apps leaves all that to the user to troubleshoot and find and fix and adapt and it's, it's really lazy. Anyway, so these are included apps. Um, you'll get those out of the box. I just want to go through the settings manager here. If you look at the settings manager, it might look a little different than uh, probably the default XFCE or uh, Cinnamon, uh, since we are a little bit of both with a little bit of GNOME thrown in there. Uh, background, obviously, if you click background, it will open up the wallpaper changer. Dock manager, if you click on dock manager, it will actually open up the options for the dock, which is nice because you can uh, change the theme, you can position your dock, add behavior, and so forth, so forth, so forth. Uh, we'll get the full screen gestures in a minute. Hot corners, obviously you can uh, select the hot corners, what they do. The, the currently they programmed for menus, but you can program them for other items. Notifications, preferred apps, your ring menu options. Here you can set all the settings for your GNOME Pi, which is the, the ring menu. So if you want to change settings for ring menu over there, it's screensaver. Uh, clicking on themes will open up the themes box. Uh, themes advanced will actually open up the appearance, the actual default XFCE theming. So there you can pretty much go and set your theme settings and so forth. Uh, although uh, it mostly does the same as what the themes option does there. Window manager, again, that's part of the themes advanced really because it just lets you choose your window manager, uh, your windows borders. Window Manager Tweaks let you set your compositor, placement, focus, accessibility, and so forth. Uh, workspaces, you know, terminal, and so forth. Keyboard, mouse, power, manager, display, printers. So you can easily configure your printer straight from the settings manager. It's already on there. Auto login, driver manager, firewall. Yes, it comes with a def uh, core, comes with a firewall as well as a, a, a virus scanner built in. So your system is pretty safe and secure. Startup Manager, Software Center, Update Manager, which is the, up, the, the update manager that you see here. Um, something else, uh, Synaptic Package Manager. I will just want to cover this Samba Share. Samba Share is to quickly share a folder on your PC, mostly probably with like a Windows PC or whatever, but I think it shares with just about any computer. So you can right click anywhere and you can just choose uh, Share. Okay, so for example, Share Files and Folders. If I right click on the desktop and I go share files and folders, it will automatically add the actual desktop that I'm on. So I can just add it there. Done. It's now added there. And the permissions are set. Remember when I right click and added it, uh, I chose public and read only. Okay. So if I want to add another folder, let's take for example, I go to file system and I want to share my let's say my snap folder. I can just right click on snap and I can go share and it comes up there, snap, public, read only, okay, done. And it's actually telling me you have insufficient privileges, which is really great because you, know, you can't just share anything. Let's go into somewhere where I actually have, where I don't need root privileges. Let's go like downloads, for example, just share downloads. And there we go, downloads, it's already selected. 
and they successfully created that's really awesome by the way let's go back again let's try something else like for example if I want to share the var folder and go share and it allows me no it says you do not have sufficient permission uh, permission so obviously I would have to open this as root and then share it and then it will share but Samba share works out of the box and you don't need to actually come into Samba share to configure it you can simply just right click anywhere and share this right click menu is very awesome by the way it's just got so many functions you can almost run your whole system just from the right click menu but if you open up Samba share you'll see the existing shares that I have already added to remove them simply click remove select it and remove, remove downloads yes now there's nothing being shared so very easy Samba share works out of the box and like I said you can just right click anywhere and just choose uh, where is it? share files and folders right um, the other thing I want to show is the screen share app okay so screen share lets people connect to your desktop so this is like remote desktop but it's for people connecting to you not you connecting to people if you want to connect to somebody else you will use uh, uh, where is it Romina is to connect to somebody else's desktop if you want them to be able to connect to you then this is screen share now screen share is in the menu if you go look down there somewhere or you'll see screen share screen share screen share screen there we go screen share it is in the menu but you can also find it here in uh, in your system settings Oops, sorry roll that up there we go system settings there's screen share okay so if we actually open up screen share let's roll that back up again and move that out of the way as you can see the doc disappears very nice because I need that space um okay but the doc is back why it's because I'm I'm using this window I'm not using the screen share window over here as you see if I move to the screen share window the doc disappears again okay so uh to to actually show you how the screen share works uh, it's a little different to probably what you used to uh, these buttons they activate immediately it's not like enable disable enable disable and then save if you click enable it's enabled immediately uh, what you see here in the brackets is what actually what the actual item is called in the config section so this is a description and then that's what the name of the actual item is so show notifications on connect is the description but uh, the actual item is called notify on connect so let's do a status check quickly if i click status check you see here the items and there's notify on connect notify on connect the description says to show notifications on connect but the item name is notify on connect and it's set to true currently which means it's enabled enabled notifications on connect okay so let's say i want to disable that then i would just click disable and if I do a status check now, you'll see that it's false, it's disabled. If I want to enable it again, I just move to enable, and there it's true. Okay. So enable, disable, just click it changes on the fly. And if you actually open up the system, uh, the, the status check here, you can find these items. There's notify and connect. There's notify and connect. There's view only. Where's view only? Let's go find view only. There's view only. Prompt enabled. Let's go find prompt enabled. Uh, where do you stay with this prompt enable just below view only and require encryption there is require encryption so those are the ones that you will be changing values of that one there that one there that no these two sorry let me highlight both at the same time view only prompt enabled notify on connect okay so very easy to change just select the box and the value changes immediately for example, view only, allow others to control your desktop. If you want them to have access to your desktop, you can click enabled. And if you look here, it will say view only false. It should be view only false. The reason is this is a reverse one. It's like a reverse setting. View only enabled means they can only view. Disable view only means they actually have access. Okay. So enable will set it to false and disable will set it to true it's like a reverse setting just be careful of that confirm each connection so when somebody wants to connect you must actually confirm it confirm each connection prompt enabled it's currently set on true and so forth so forth so forth so you can set these each in any way you like you can also set it to auto start and boot 
just click auto start at boot and now it will start up at boot and if for some reason it's not currently running you can just click start sharing then we're done just click the button and it automatically starts the, the, the service in the background. Okay, very easy. And if you are not sure how to use this, just click the help video guide. It will actually open up a little video in the browser and it will guide you through how to run it. And of course, you can always do a status check to see what the actual screen share status is. So very, this is very simple and easy to use screen share that's incorporated into the system. That is so awesome. Okay. Synaptic Package Manager is, of course, one of the options to install software. You also notice the theming here looks excellent. Just look how beautiful this is. So you can either use Synaptic Epic, uh, Package Manager to install software, or you can use the default software manager. If you click Software Manager, it will actually open up the GNOME Software Manager. And just it's the first time I'm opening it, so let it just quickly update. And my internet here is terrible. Um, but yeah, you can select the category. These are editors' picks, obviously. So you can select the category and you can select an item. Uh, just let it load. Oh, internet. There we go. So internet is terrible. Uh, you can just flat, oh, flat out the supported, snaps is supported. So both are installed and supported. You can simply just click on an item open up if there's a screenshot we'll give you a screenshot if not it will say no screenshot you can see the ratings over here uh, space required packages required and just click install very easy of course like i said flat hub and snap snaps is also uh, supported with software manager so you've got a wide selection of software available out of the box really nice your web browser is google chrome which is really easy to use, easy to manage, works out of the box. Okay, so I think we've covered just about the whole system. Uh, you can right-click, scan for viruses, obviously, which is really nice. Uh, open as root. You've got um, search files and folders, which will use Catfish to actually search files and folders. So there's lots of, you can create a link quickly. So you can just right-click anything, create a link like for example link to videos and then you can drag and drop the link anyway let's go into the videos folder let's go create a document here empty document we call it test and we go back here to the home folder now we go to videos create a link and if we go link to videos it will actually open videos and say test and if we cut that link to videos we paste it somewhere else let's paste it here and we double click it see there's the thing test so create link works out of the box really really nice if you have an iso file which i don't you can just simply double click the iso it will mount it or you can right click it and open it with archive manager or burn it with xf burn really nice or create the usb you know it's all there uh, if you're running uh, windows apps you can just double click the exe double click the msi it will open with wine and work, work out of the box really nice the last thing I want to show now is the full screen gesture menu, uh, full screen gesture system. So if we open up here, full screen gestures are, sorry man, I'm in Vietnam, it's very noisy here. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about background sounds, it's kind of just part of the country. So if you hear hooting and uh, it's just the traffic outside, it's nothing else I can, it's a very noisy country. Uh, I don't mind it, I'm used to it, but some of you might be thinking, wow, it's noisy yeah it is uh, okay so if we open up uh, a gesture system to enable enable you can just click here to configure you can just click over there you've got some options here please note that it does not work in virtualbox but it does work in vmware and it should work on just about every other uh, machine out there hardware wise right so uh, first let's enable it so you can just click enable and then choose yes enable and then let's go back there quickly and just open up because I want to have the config open while we're using it. So let's drag this here and let's go open up the config and then let's drag that over there. Okay, so if you look here, you'll see that we've already config uh, configured quite a few gestures out of the box. Okay, so you've got preferences where you can set some preferences and you can set your input devices and so forth as well here yeah, under advanced behavior, uh, history, like what 
what strokes you've used, how often you've used them, percentage-wise, and so forth. Here you can set your shortcuts, which buttons to use. Um, okay. Now, by default, once you've enabled it and you drag on the screen, it will just drag a little line and you can make a gesture. For example, if you want to open wallpaper, you can just make a W and wallpaper, wallpaper opens. So it doesn't matter where you are, you just make a W. Whether you're on the desktop or you're inside an actual folder, you can also make a W. It really doesn't matter where you make the W. You can be anywhere and just make a W and if, sorry, if you make it uh, properly the wallpaper changer open now how these actually work is you read it from the darker to the lighter so the dark blue to light green okay so the dark is where it starts where the actual gesture starts and you drag your mouse all along there to the green so for example the terminal would be like an upside down cross going first from upper left to bottom right up and then down so we can just do that to open terminal, but you've got to do it quickly. You can't do it slowly. You know, if you do it slowly, it doesn't register. Slow, slow, slow. Nothing happens, but you do it quickly, and the terminal opens, as you can see. Okay, so easy, quick and easy, backwards cross. Okay, the, um, where's the ring menu? The ring menu, the ring menu is on the other way again. The ring menu, you just make the, the, the cross the other way around. With a little bit of a loop as you can see there okay very easy software center is just an s okay so you just make an s software center as you can see it starts at the top goes all along there back forward update manager wallpaper manager maximize minimize bottom top quit scroll refresh open the fad is just an l um package manager terminal home folder so you can pretty much control your whole desktop from here you can re-record these strokes if you don't like, if you know, I'm left-handed, so everything slants to the left, but you might be right-handed, you can simply click home, delete a, a, a stroke, and then re-record the stroke, and make a new stroke, and uh, you, you can make your own as well, add a command, or a key, or whatever you want to add, the, there's a lot here uh, that you can do, there's an actual video help guide that will show you how the whole of the gesture system works. But I tell you, it's really great for people with touch screens or people that, you know, prefer sort of just to use the mouse to operate their operating system instead of, uh, you know, keyboards and, and menus and so forth. Um, another thing to note is when you do enable it, for example, when I enable it, it will put an onboard little icon on the desktop, which will then open the on-screen keyboard, which is really nice. Okay, if I disable it, double-click it. Choose disable, the onboard gets removed. The reason for that is people that use touch screens, they may just want to quickly access the keyboard. They don't have a keyboard, they can just tap on the onboard on the screen. So that's really, really nice. Um, let me just quit onboard there. I think I've covered just about everything that most people should need to know out of the box. The rest I will leave for you to discover. The operating system is awesome. As you can see, I'm inside a virtual machine, it flies flies it flies it flies um, the, probably one of the biggest differences apart from all the new little GUI upgrades that a lot of people probably would have noticed from last year's core is the fact that we no longer use Thunar we now use Nemo as, as our default file manager which is nice because originally when we themed this we actually themed it for Nemo but we ended up using Thunar because last year's Nemo was not that great but uh, since then, Nemo has had quite a lot of upgrades. We like what we see, and so we've switched to Nemo. So Nemo is the default file manager, not Sunar. Um, apart from that, we're running on the 5.3 kernel. Uh, it is the HWE kernel, which is a hardware-enhanced or hardware-enabled kernel. Um, you will need at least 64-bit OS. You will probably need at least about a gig of RAM. I would say recommend it. 1 to 5, 2 gigs of RAM and more is probably recommended because there is 3D and eye candy and some stuff. Um, space usage, I would probably say 15 gigabytes and more should be sufficient for the to run the operating system. Out of the box, works like a dream. I hope you guys enjoy using it. There's a lot of nice eye candy in here, a lot of nice backgrounds. Just, just all around, everything is just beautiful and feels comfortable and it is a little unconventional, I give you that. There's a lot in here that you probably won't find in most operating systems. But I tell you, 
it is such a pleasant experience using it once you use it for a few days it's hard to go back it really is you know once you get used to the way things run and how quickly you can access wallpaper and how access your clock and your menus and you know just quickly access a menu somewhere and once you start using gestures and you get used to these things in your life it's very hard to go back to just normal operating systems that don't have it the same with a dock you know right now you're thinking well what's the point of the second dock well normally you'd have your bottom dock would be bloated with items from your second dock you know these these little icons would be but here it's separate and somehow it feels comfortable you know and you use it for a few days the, this way and it's going back it just feels like you're taking a step backwards so core is unique in its own way uh, maybe a little unconventional but it runs great feels great looks great it is just stunning out of the box and it's so snappy i wouldn't say it's fast it's not like flash fast but it's fast you know you don't feel any lag put it that way it's, it just feels snappy which is nice um so yeah uh we've been working on this for about about a year as as we had normally do with our releases so a lot of hard work went into this a lot a lot of hard work guys a lot so we're very happy to bring this to you uh we hope you enjoy it anyway um so yeah uh if you guys like our work drop us a couple of bucks uh, it's not been the easiest year for us um financially especially so yeah we we don't mind some extra support so if you can afford please drop us a few bucks you can easily access donations via the icons that we have placed around or if you don't like the icons delete them uh or you can just go to our website and donate there or if you want to sponsor the project on uh, no a longer term you can become a patreon become a member uh, we do appreciate any support uh, that's it from me enjoy the operating system and uh, i will see you guys soon because we have some more goodies coming your way so look out for those and enjoy using makuru linux core edition cheers guys